In today's video, I'll be diving into the top use cases for GPT-5. With the advanced technology and better reasoning, less hallucinations, new use cases are now available that weren't really feasible before. Let's take a look at some of those use cases right now. One of the use cases is personalized dashboards. GPT-5 has the ability to create SaaS on demand. It doesn't have the ability to create full stack applications, but small SaaS locally is something that is quickly becoming available due to the advanced coding capabilities. Let me show you guys my example, followed by a different example of where you can use GPT-5 to create a quick app that can enhance your business or your personal life. So now I'm going to actually ask ChatGPT to build me something that I will use on a day-to-day -day basis for growing a small business slash startup that I'm gonna be working on. And I think it's very useful if you actually utilize GPT-5 to build these personal web apps that can just enhance your life in a much more effective way. So what I wanna do is I wanna make this company as valuable as possible. So I'm essentially going to ask ChatGPT and I've essentially asked it to build me something where I can see the valuation of this SaaS increase or decrease based on the different things that I choose to do. That way I can realize where to put my energy so that I can not only make the product better, but also increase the valuation of the SaaS. Powerful model, and I put render everything in Canvas. Okay, now all we need to do is click run code. Considering this is a pretty simple web application, it doesn't need to take too long. So yeah, here we can see the valuation of the SaaS and we can see everything as we change it. So we can see, of course, the ARR, I can change how much money the business is making. I can say the, you know, monthly growth, I can say the, you know, the churn, and then I can see exactly how much the business is worth based on all of these different factors. So maybe you're not building a business, but maybe you're doing something that requires a little bit more information and you don't really know how to visualize all of that if you're dealing with, you know, maybe not complex systems, but systems that are affected by multiple different factors. You could ask it to just say, hey, throw all of these into an interactive dashboard. And for my personal use case, let me do this. Now, of course, if you do also have memory on with GPT-5, you could definitely ask GPT-5 to go ahead and then do that. You could be like, hey, by the way, what things do I need to streamline based on your past conversations with me? But for me, I know that this is probably gonna be something that I could use to see, okay, if the business is making, you know, this amount of money and I decide to, you know, change this factor, this gives me this valuation in a few years. And what's really cool is that, you know, it shows the different sectors like vertical SaaS, you know, consumer subscription, you know, a FinTech SaaS. It's just, there's just so many different things here that are really, really cool. So I think this just shows the use cases of GPT-5 because before we really didn't have these interactive dashboards that we could just use instantly. Now, if you want, you can take a look at this guy, Pietro, who actually took it to a whole other level and built some personalized apps for his design company with an AI tool that just makes things a bit more personalized. Of course, you can go ahead and do this, but I wanted to personally show you guys these simple examples, but this one is on a much higher level. My name is Pietro. I'm a designer and developer, and I'm the CEO of Magic Path, and it's a design tool with AI at the center. I have this philosophy that nothing is real until it's in people's hands. What I really care about is the interaction. The special thing about GPT-5, it is the closest model that I experienced to actually get your ideas. One of the many applications that I built with GPT-5 when I was testing the model, I asked uh, for basically a camera app where I can draw in real time in the air and he has sense of my end movement. We have the canvas in a, in a, in a camera. We have our hand tracking movement, which is pretty crazy. You know, you can just like resize the size of the brush just by doing this. When I open my palm and if I close the palm, the palette goes down. GPT-5 just like did this uh, in one shot. And I think in particular with GPT-5, the things that really struck me the first time that I use it is that innate sense of creativity and taste. I asked GPT-5 to create a beautiful infinite canvas app where I can drag and drop photos, text file, and website all in one file. It was the choose of spacing, typography, uh, rhythm, the framing. It was really like I was talking to a designer. A lot of times you can be a great engineer, but you might suck at debugging. GPT-5 excels at it. It actually returns a large, larger amount of code compared to other model, and it's actually coherent code. And when you combine speed, intelligence, reasoning, 
tool calling, understanding, everybody now is going to get access to the best intelligence. Now, another clear use case for GPT-5 is acting as an intelligent co-writing assistant. Most people know that you can use these models to write, but I want you guys to understand that when you actually use this model as an intelligent co-assistant, you can make incredible things. Take a look at this example from the official OpenAI website where someone uses it for creative writing. My name is Sarah Rose Siskin, and I am a science comedy writer, and that's a real job. GPT-5 is the ultimate research assistant. There are so many niche expertises. Now you can hire a comedy writer to understand nuclear quantum mechanics or whatever, and they can go in and truly try with a beginner's mind and a comedian's mindset to understand the details of what you do and make it relatable. I wrote this show that I never thought could see the light of day until GPT-5 came out. It's called the primordial soap opera. No hour is too late, no question is too weird or too hard. And it's able to understand the emotional complexity of the question I'm asking, as well as the scientific grounding. Research, mind map, then it's your job to find the most delightful juxtapositions and put them together. I'm gonna pressure test these characters by giving it a scenario. So it gave me three scenelets, which is great. Devin keeps trying to set up Jesse with Morgan. That's great, that's a classic. You both love sulfur. <laughs> that's an interesting thing because like, this actually makes me wonder a question I haven't really thought of before. GBT5 is really good at understanding the voice and perspective of characters because not only does it have a sense of what words they might choose, but also what are their motivations. This back and forth is how collaboration happens. And by using advanced voice mode and just acting stuff out, I can actually create more robust characters. When you're in a creative flow state, you don't want to toggle between different models. GPT-5, it'll toggle for you between reasoning models and towards multimodality, web search, whatever it is, it does it for you so that you can just get to the meat of this stuff. It automates a lot of the stuff we don't want to do and it augments what we're good at doing. And truly, I think of this next frontier as a much larger writer's room. So what you can really use GPT-5 for, which is really cool, is to essentially reason about the future in a way that hasn't occurred yet. So remember how in this video I talk about the fact that I'm working on a business, I can ask it questions and ask it to reason through the most likely scenarios based on all the current available information. But let's say I wanted to just give you guys a bit more information about what I'm building. So I've said, let's say I wanted to build a fintech SaaS with an AI integration for consumers. Based on the current trajectory of AI, what would be the most likely verticals to succeed and what are most likely to fail? I want something that is future-proof. Think deeply and search. Remember with your prompts, always add what you want it to do. If you want it to genuinely think deeply about the problem, make sure you add this. And if you do want it to search, I've noted that GPT-5 will often sometimes just answer you off the bat and you really don't want to do that. So always add the search function because it can still hallucinate some small part of the times. So now that I've done this, it's going to return me some kind of research report that shows me the areas that are most likely to succeed so I can pursue them without wasting additional time. So here I can see it gives me an entire research report for 2025 to 2028 if I was going to build something in this sector. And this is really useful because not only is it reasoning based on its thinking and of course its past training data, it's also adding the future so that it also has relevant data for the upcoming years. So we can see here what is going to be future proof. It brings in some things about the EU AI Act and it also shows me, and this is the most important part for those of you who are potentially future planning for many different things, what's most likely to fail. It says, you know, standalone chatbots, autonomous investing agents. It says you'll spend your runaway on lawyers. So it basically talks about many different things here that are consumer first, UK ready, and how I can de-risk. Things like this is how you should be using the model because of course, I'm not saying that this is the Oracle prediction that's going to predict everything, but it's definitely going to give you at least some really valuable insights on how to navigate the future considering most people are completely confused by it. Now I'll show you another use case where someone also uses GPT-5 to do essentially something along the similar lines, reasoning about something that simply hasn't occurred yet and using it to make decisions for the current. GPT-5 is able to predict the outcomes of experiments that we haven't even done. That saves us weeks, sometimes months. Fundamentally, it will change the way we do science. My name is Dr. Daria Unutmas. I am a professor, a human immunologist, 
I've been working in the lab for the past 35 years, trying to understand how the immune system works and how it impacts different diseases. I've been using ChatGPT models as a collaborator for uh, for more than a year, but I think GPT-5 takes that to another level. Now I'm interacting with a model that knows more than me on my own field. It's beyond collaborator, it's almost like a mentor. Recently, I gave GPT-5 an experiment about some immune cells that are engineered to recognize cancer cells. And we had beautiful data, but we couldn't figure out what it meant. So I uploaded this to GPT-5, and it not only suggested things that we later on uh, performed, but also remarkable new insights. It even suggested follow-up experiments. In science, the number of things you can try are almost unlimited. So if GPT-5 can suggest the right approach, instead of trying 1,000 things, you will try maybe 10 things and everything will progress much faster. It's tremendous for brainstorming. It's back and forth, being able to critique my own ideas uh, and then come up with new ideas. That's the best I can ask for from a collaborator. So I think GPT-5 will help the patients to advocate for themselves. And I think that will empower the patients to feel more confident when they talk to their doctors. Now, another thing that most people don't utilize enough is the advanced voice mode. I'm not gonna show you guys a personal example here, but I'm pretty sure if you're familiar with the voice mode, you can simply use this to bounce off your ideas, especially if you want to, you know, learn a language as they're about to show in this demo here. It's really useful for that because now it supports more additional languages. And since the voice mode is a bit more dynamic, you can actually have conversations that flow at different speeds, allowing you to increase or decrease the difficulty for absolutely anything. It's super useful. Now, let's move on to something more practical. Uh, learning is a top use case for our voice model. People love to use it to dive deep into topics, get quiz before exams, or learn new languages. For me, I've been learning Korean recently, and I found that speaking it and understanding it incredibly challenging. But let's see how voice can help. To do that, I will enable this study and learn mode. It's a new mode feature we launched in ChatGPT that guides you step by step towards deeper understanding of a subject. Now we can enter into voice. Hey chat, I'm learning Korean. Could you help me practicing it? Let's say, uh, let's pretend I'm ordering at a cafe. Now, what should I say in Korean? Absolutely, I'd be happy to help you practice. So if you're at a cafe and you want to keep it simple, you could start with something like, 안녕하세요. Americano Hanjan Juseo, which means hello, I'd like one Americano, please. And of course, you can adjust it based on what you want to order. Let me know if you want to try out more phrases. Could you speak that part really slowly? Because I'm a beginner and I want to hear every word clearly. Now, let's level things up. Could you speak that part really, really fast? Faster than a Korean would do. Sure, I'll speed it up as much as I can. So it would sound like this. 안녕하세요. 아메리카노 한잔 주세요. Basically, just zipping right to it. Let me know if you need any more speed adjustments. Now, another thing that you might want to do if you're like me and you sometimes struggle to manage everything and juggle everything is that you can use AI to simply handle all of that. Coming in the next one or two weeks, OpenAI is going to, you know, use GPT-5, integrate it with Gmail, your calendar, so that you can simply ask it to ensure that you're up to date on absolutely everything and that your life is entirely scheduled. Take a look because this is the feature that I'll be using all the time. But ChatGPT still has many limitations. It doesn't understand my actual schedule. Next week, starting with pro users, followed by plus team and enterprise users, this is changing, and we're giving ChatGPT access to Gmail and Google Calendar. Let me show you how I've been using it. So I'll just ask something simple, like help me plan my schedule tomorrow. It's been a pretty busy week for us, <laughs> so I've been using this every day this week to help get my life together. I've already given ChatGPT access to my Gmail and Google Calendar, so it just works and it's easy here. But if you hadn't, ChatGPT would be asking you to connect right now. Let's see what ChatGPT is doing. Okay, that was pretty quick. Okay, so ChatGPT has pulled in my schedule tomorrow 
And oh, without even asking, ChatGPT found time for my run. I don't think I was invited to the launch celebration. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you on there, we'll get you on there. ChatGPT has found an email that I didn't respond to two days ago. I will get on that right after this and even pulled together a packing list for my uh, red eye tomorrow night based on what it knows I like to have with me. Now, another feature that I would most certainly recommend you to be using for GPT-5 is just being context aware of any situation that you're not the most up to date on. In this example, they share Carolina's story and they share how she was pretty confused about her diagnosis. But when they asked GPT-5, because not only does it have updated health knowledge and the ability to reason about that in a way that's understandable for the average person, it's also much better at preventing hallucinations. So essentially really good because because it helped her navigate this really tough time in her life. So sometimes we all do have tough decisions to make and adding more context and more knowledge allows us to make, you know, much better informed decisions. Um, so last October, our lives were turned completely upside down when I was diagnosed with three different cancers, including an aggressive form of breast cancer at the age of 39, all within one week. And there's just absolutely nothing that prepares you to receive news like this. Um, I found out about the first diagnosis when I got an email notification that my biopsy results were ready. I decided to open it. And when I opened it, I saw the only two words that I could understand from the report, which was invasive carcinoma. And I knew that wasn't good, but everything else was just a blur of medical jargon. So I completely panicked and in that moment did the first thing that I thought of, which was to take a screenshot of the report and put it into ChatGPT to see if it could just help me understand what this meant. And within seconds, it translated this complex report into plain language that I could understand. And in this moment of overwhelm and panic, I had a little bit of clarity about what was going on. And that moment was really important because by the time I got a hold of my doctor and we got on the phone, which was three hours after I had seen the report, I had a baseline understanding of what I was facing and we were able to jump into a conversation about what to do next. And how have you been using ChatGPT throughout? I've used it in so many different aspects of my journey, but one of the ways that I found it most powerful is in helping me make critical decisions and in helping me advocate for myself. So to share an example, when I was facing a decision about whether or not to do radiation as part of my treatment, the doctors themselves didn't agree. My case was nuanced and there wasn't a medical consensus on the right path. And so the experts turned the decision back to me as the patient. And for me, bearing the weight of this decision that could have lifelong impact felt really heavy and I didn't feel equipped to make the call. So I turned to ChatGPT to gain knowledge and understand the nuances of my case. And again, within minutes, it gave me a breakdown that not only matched what the doctors had already shared with us, but was much more thorough than anything that could fit into a 30 minute consultation. And it went further. It helped me weigh the pros and cons. It helped me understand the risks and the benefits. And ultimately, it helped me make a decision that I felt was informed, that I felt I could stand behind when the stakes were so high for me and my family. Yeah. I mean, for me, what was really inspirational was watching her regain her sense of agency by using ChatGPT.